Hey, how's it going? I'm Neo, and we're going to give a try at a vermicompost worm composting bin. So I've done this before. In fact, these plastic bins I've had for probably uh, 10 years or so. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I, I moved and that sort of thing, I just kind of lost uh, lost some interest in, in the uh, worm bin just because I wasn't really home very much and that sort of thing. But um, I'm going to be doing it, you know, getting it back up and going again. So. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of small changes. I'm going to show you how it's uh, how it's done, and we'll see if I can get it get it done well. There was a point in time when I was actually actively uh, uh, taking care of these guys, like you know, every day, and and um, yeah, I guess I didn't really need daily maintenance, maybe weekly, and and so it, it worked out really well for a while. So I've got to get worms. I've got my my dog, hey buddy, uh, and uh, and so yeah, we're going to try and get this thing up and going again. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and I'm going to do a few things differently. One thing that's different than the last time that I did it is, uh, is I'm going to use what's called um, a coconut core, uh, C-O-I-R, and it is basically the husk of the coconut and uh, it works as a really good bedding. It absorbs a lot of moisture. I just, actually just took one of the bricks. Uh, so this is uh, what the bricks look like and that brick turned into basically a bucket full of this stuff that I, I rinsed out best as I could. It's supposed to be already rinsed, supposed to be low salt, but I made sure to try and rinse it best as I could uh, before before I'm using it because it is in fact coconuts. They are by the ocean, they absorb salt, and so that husk can really get uh, get a lot of salt in it and well osmosis. Worms don't really like the uh, action of osmosis too much, especially with them breathing through their skin. Worms are pretty cool. Uh, the red wigglers and uh, and they they have seven hearts and that whole thing and there's some pretty cool things about them but but uh, let's uh, let's kind of get into this by the way um, I kind of looking up to a little bit of the environmental impact of the coconut core um, so it's, it's used as a, a you know a gardening product like peat moss uh, peat moss is something that comes from something that's de decomposed in the ground it's it's old decomposed material and it's something that is thousands if not millions of the years in the making and so it's not necessarily completely sustainable but it depends on what part of the world so most of our peat in uh, in this area in the United States uh, we get ours from Canada and the areas of Canada those especially with some global warming issues uh, plenty of peat is being exposed uh, as time goes on and in fact Canada has even said that there's plenty of, of decomposing material to replenish the peat that's being being taken up. So the environmental impact of peat isn't so bad here in the States, uh, so why use the coconut core? It absorbs moisture much more, although the peat moss has more nutrient material for your garden, and the uh, the coconut absorbs moisture like crazy. It, I am very impressed as to just how much water it's able to retain. So just didn't play with it for a few seconds. So here is the worm compost bin system. I use a three-tiered system. Uh, here is my lid. I'm going to actually put some bigger holes in the lid. You can see some small holes here that I had uh, done before, but uh, I'm going to put some bigger, bigger holes. And, um, and so that's going to do a couple things. One, obviously, it's going to create some aeration but also the worms don't like sunlight and I don't really want them trying to escape so it's going to prevent them from doing that and let them kind of stay in. Also I do put like sort of a bit of a topper on top to try and protect them a little bit and prevent them from coming up too much. So I have four bins total. Uh, the bottom bin is the only one that is uh, a deeper bin. The rest are, are a bit bigger. You'll notice that in this bin I have some holes drilled here. Um, this is probably enough to get the aeration, although I could probably drill a few more. I don't want to go all the way down because there will be some uh, seepage of, of liquid that will drain down to the bottom. Uh, I, I could, although I probably don't have to, I could put a, um, a tap of some kind, you know, like from those like uh, drink dispensers. Uh, I could put a tap here just to be able to drain off that liquid. Uh, some people say that you can use it in your garden, some people not. I tried it in the past and it did not work out well. Uh, I think that the pH can be a bit off on it, so I think you have to dilute it very greatly. Uh, but it's probably good in terms of nitrogen levels and things like that, but, uh, but I cannot confirm too much on that. But the, the compost that is developed is known as worm castings. It's basically worm poop. And so what they do is the worms will sort of eat 
your compost material, like banana peels, okay? But do they really eat the banana peels? Actually, no. Um, so my understanding is that there is, oh, uh-oh, got a sticker, can't have a sticker. Uh, so my understanding is that essentially there's these bacteria and uh, yeast that will break down and then the worms then eat that. Uh, so they, the, the worms help keep this symbiotic relationship going on and uh, help keep things in this nice controlled environment because things don't want to become too, uh, you don't want too much fungal growth and it helps the bacteria actually do their job. So I've got these different bins and what's going to happen is I'm going to really just start off with one bin. Um, I could just have one bin or I could have all three bins and just use the top one. And what will happen is uh, I'll put the worms in, uh, you put you know, the food on the top and, and they will rise to the top to eat. And after three or four months, this bin will be pretty much composted. And what I will do is I will shift that one to the bottom and then bring an empty one to the top and I'll put some food in it, put some bedding, and the worms will already come through. They will on their own come through the holes that will be drilled in the bottom of the, of the bin. I have some holes, but I realize that it's not enough, so I'm gonna drill more holes. And so they'll come up through the holes and they will go towards that new layer. And then by the time the top bin gets to the bottom bin, then that bottom bin will be just compost, just castings, and be basically devoid of worms. If there is still any worms in it, I have learned that the trick to do is to get out on some sort of like bench and just spread the worms out, make a fairly thin layer, about an inch thick, and the worms will go to the bottom. You can just kind of scrape off the top castings and be able to collect the castings, and then you'll have virtually concentrated worms in the bottom that you can put back in your bin. Don't put the worms in your garden, even though some people say to, but those people don't know that worms are in fact invasive species. And so for your garden, because you are uh, putting your plants down and rooting them, uh, that might be fine for your garden. However, for, uh, for you know, saplings and tree, you know, certain species of, of tree like poplar, those, those seedlings aren't able to, um, to get the nutrients that are at the, at the top. And so what, what worms will do is they will take the nutrients that are at the top and they'll, they'll mix them with the rest of the soil, which is bad for some seedlings which need this nutrients at the top because they don't have deep roots. And so it actually causes uh, much of the forest to then become uh, devoid of, of life, of young growth, because they don't get that nutrients from the top layer. So let's get into the worm bin. So I've got holes in each of these, obviously, except for the bottom one, just holes here in order to have aeration. I'm going to put more holes here. Uh, and like I said, and then we'll, we'll get into, um, we'll actually get into like putting the worms in. So let's go ahead and put some more holes in these guys. Do it. the next step where we put uh, some worms in. So what we want to do is we want to get some of the coconut uh, core here. This is going to be our bedding. We don't need to go crazy with it. And as far as moisture goes, um, I could probably squeeze out some of the moisture. You can see just how much moisture this stuff holds but I think that since a lot of the other stuff I'm not putting in uh, excuse me a lot of the other stuff I'm putting in is going to be dry eh, you know what I should probably take out some of the moisture because the the fruit and and stuff that you put in has moisture on its own I'm gonna ah, there we go squeeze out some more of the moisture I don't want too much for these guys ah. You want something that is, is, is sort of moist, but certainly not wet. Uh, something else I'm gonna get is I'm going to get some, uh, some shredded paper, and I'm also going to try and get some soil that has some grit in there. Uh, some eggshells will work well, and I'll get some of those. So let me go ahead and get those, and, and we'll take care of that. All right, so uh, luckily, well, 
not necessarily luckily, but when I was uh, sent the worms, they sent it actually in some coconut core, which is really nice, and they also gave some shredded paper as well, so I'm going to throw some of that in. So um, when I had done this the first time around, I did not use any of the coconut stuff because that just wasn't even a thing that was on my radar, and I just used bedding and, and cardboard, and, uh, and it, it's fine, you know? But I do, I, you know, in doing some research and starting this over again, I found that the coconut core works really nicely in terms of being able to moderate the moisture nicely. Um, you know, if you want to put tomatoes in here, tomatoes hold a lot of, a lot of juice, obviously, and it can really oversaturate the, the system and you do not want that. So if water, if, uh, if liquid does build up in this bottom one, that's kind of an indication that it's just too wet. And, uh, and so you need to kind of dry out the system. Whenever you feed them, you should probably add some more, more bedding. And uh, let's get this mixed up here. Yeah, I kind of feel like I probably could have sent, you know, taken out even more of the, of the moisture, to be honest. But it'll probably be okay. So I'm gonna put some old potting soil in here. That'll probably help take up some of the some of the moisture. So it's gonna have some grit to it. Get that mixed up and have some eggshells. Grind those up. I also see a spider in there. I'm gonna take him out so he can live. eggshells to be good so the calcium is really good for the um, uh, for the worms for the calcium and just the the grit itself it helps them digest so try and break that up a little bit uh, what would be even better if you if you have like an old uh, an old like coffee grinder uh, putting it in that would really be good for them but this should be sufficient I'll be able to chomp away at little bits of it I think I'm going to put even more paper in there. Help take up some of that moisture that I've got in the coconut core. Okay. Banana peel. And worms. Let's take a look at these guys. Hopefully they're still alive. coconut core that they gave me. Isn't that awesome? All right, look at these guys. They tend to clump up, clump up into one big grouping. Look at that. Those are cute little guys. And uh, they are really good self-moderators in terms of population. So um, if you're not putting enough food in, then you're not going to have as many worms and they'll just not procreate as much. Uh, if you put more food in, they will start to procreate more in order to be able to consume more. But don't overdo it. Um, people say that they can consume uh, their weight in food per day, but that to me, that's not true. Especially un not until it is a very well-established system. So uh, supposedly this is a pound of worms. I uh, got it from Buckeye Farms, I believe. Uh, and. Um, you know, if they, I like the way they package it. I'm not sure if I really agree that it's that it's truly a pound of worms because typically you'd have a thousand worms per pound, but uh, maybe they're adding in that coconut core in terms of their weight, but whatever. It should be able to get me started and I'm just gonna put in the two banana peels to start and I'm not even gonna put anything else in for at least a few days. Um, especially after shipping, you know, they're kind of like, you know, in shock a little bit. So they need time to, uh, to reestablish. Worst thing you can do is overfeed them, and the worst thing you can do besides that is to to let there be too more too much moisture. And since the food has a lot of moisture in it, those two things usually go hand in hand. So you want to uh, you want to put foods in there that are going to be uh, dry, especially at first. Banana peels are great because they're low in low in that moisture content. Don't put any tomatoes in right away. Don't put any onions ever. Don't put any sort of meat ever. Don't put anything that's too spicy. And um, you know, no, certainly no dairy uh, products in there. Let's see, what else? I know I'm missing something. No onion. Nothing spicy. Oh, and no citrus. 
uh, so you can't put any citrus peels in there either. Like I said, as I keep putting food on top, from here on out, I'll pretty much put the food on top. In fact, I should probably put things put this a little bit higher. I don't want them to, because they like to be top feeders. And, uh, and so what they'll do is they'll come to the top, they'll feed and all the compost will essentially go to the bottom. And as I put more food, they will keep coming up to the top and eventually, this will probably take about three months for this bin to be up to about this level with, with, uh, with castings. And then I'll put this bin down to the next level down. I'll put another bin up top, put food and bedding in it that will come up to the top. And, uh, and by the time that this bin gets down to the bottom, which will be a while from now, it'll probably be in the, it's what, spring, it's, uh, April. This probably won't be until fall that I can really harvest that bottom bin for castings, but it will be very rich in, in gardening material. And uh, and actually maybe, a, you know, if I can really get these things going, uh, if I feed them consistently, then then I can probably actually have something uh, sooner than that. But, uh, but I don't wanna go too hard on them too fast. I wanna be nice and easy. And so I can't just really nearly just start throwing things in there. So I'm gonna go easy on them to start and I'll, I'll introduce more and more food as time goes on. And, uh, and one thing that I do on top is I will put uh, something on top, what I've, uh, in fact, uh, you could put newspaper up top and I'll show you what I, what I use for the top. This is actually what I've used in the past. Um, it, this is actually just a, a washable uh, filter media for a furnace uh, that I had lying around years ago and, and this seemed to work out well so I just cut it to shape and uh, you know it just kind of helps keep everything in. Otherwise you can use newspaper to kind of cover them up but, uh, but I'll see if this works again and, and just that's it just throw that on top uh, it's plenty breathable which is something I like about it and uh, yeah that's about it let's I'm gonna put this guy up top I'm gonna drill a few more holes so that way there's more light and I actually keep this thing in my basement it, if you if you do it right it won't smell so that's vermicomposting in a nutshell <laughs> nutshell that's it you have a good one